Deep in the lair at Max Sound Solutions, I have been installing Exion 5680s for days, perhaps weeks. Hey guys, it's Lance at McV Audio, which is now officially Max Sound Solutions Incorporated. That's right, I've incorporated a new name, Max Sound Solutions, uh, and my last name is Mick Vicker, so that's where the Mac comes from. It has nothing to do with Apple. Anyway, it's that time of year again where I've decided to put new processors in my Mac Pro. It's been a little over a year since I did my initial first upgrade. So the firmware is there, already installed, you know, because I already it's already a 2010 Mac Pro basically. Uh, I have 5650s in there. I'm going to be putting in 5680s. So I didn't go for the 5690s because they're almost twice the price of the 5680s. 5680s seem to be the sweet spot right now, 3.33 gigahertz um, as opposed to 3.46, which is the 5690s. You know, the difference between the 80s and the 90s are not huge, um, but the money difference is almost twice as much money. So anyway, I'm leaving my heat spreaders on. I'm not gonna remove those because I didn't on the first upgrade. Let's get to the install. I have the Arctic Silver 5. Now what I've learned is on my first install, if you look at my other video, I did the P-shaped uh, blob on top of the CPU. Then I read up later that it's better to do a line. And if you look at these chips without the heat spreader on them, they're, they're rectangular, they're not square. So a P-shaped is gonna do an even spread. They say to put a line on it, but the direction you do the line is also important. So basically the CPU is, is this way. It's not this way. So you want to do a line from left to right on both of the CPUs. So fingers crossed again because as we know, anything can happen. And I'm not using washers. A lot of people use two millimeter washers below the heat sink on the post so that you can't squash the CPU. But when I read about doing this the very first time, he said it doesn't matter. You can still squash the CPU even if you use washers. So I'm going to do what I did in my last video, which is going to be more helpful this time around, is count how many turns it takes to unscrew all the screws because now that the processors are identical in height, um, that will come in handy. Whether it really did the first time I did it, I don't know. You'll hear it click when you've gotten the screw out of its housing. 4.5. Now when I did this install originally, it didn't boot at first and I had to tighten down the heat sinks a little more and I just didn't want to over tighten. And then everything came up except for one stick of RAM was not showing up on CPU 1. And by the way, these are two different sizes, so you want to make sure you label this one A, this one B. 
or one and two because they have to go back in the same spot that they came out of. They are not identical. So that was about four and a quarter. I gotta tell you, these screws are very loose. Very loose. There's, they were not on there tight at all. One, two, three, four. I'm going to say 4.5 is the way to go because it's pretty close to that every time. Maybe five tops. They're certainly on their loose. One, two, three, four. That one was five also. Hmm. Well, anywhere between 4.5 and 5. Now here comes the tricky part is the heat sinks because I cut the wires. So I'm going to have to get down low and oh man that's going to be tricky because the connector last thing you want to do is break the heat sink. I thought I remember the connector going Oh, got to remember which way that came out. That was not easy, folks. Not easy. So you see my CPU is stuck. My pins look good. Every one of those little golden nuggets touches a pin. So if you push this in too hard, you're going to crush your pins there. And, uh, and that's it. Your belly up. So now, this baby's going to twist off. So there's your CPU. It's got a lot of the old stuff on it. We're going to have to clean that off. But these are going to be sellable. Next thing is to clean off this guy. Wow. can't believe how much compound is on there. From just a pea-sized ball to a giant mess. So it just goes to show that you should be pretty sparing because the stuff spreads out. But at the same time, if you don't have enough on there, the CPU will overheat. Look at all this stuff. Not good. So you got the two little nooks. Very important that that's where the processor goes. Hardest thing about this is reinstalling the heat sink. Could have done a better job. All right, this is the hard part. Heat sink. Okay, now I'm going to put it back in the computer. My fingers are crossed again. I hate this moment. 
It's actually quite scary doing this install this way because after clipping those connectors and having to get them back in, I don't even know if they're in all the way because I had such a little amount of wiggle room. Okay, it's the moment of truth, fingers crossed. I really didn't tighten it down that much because it got snug very easily. So maybe it's not tight enough. Maybe my connectors aren't connected. I'm gonna go hit the boot button. No boot sound. Shit. I've done it again. Nothing. <laughs> it's not booting. It's a nightmare. I shouldn't have messed with my Mac Pro. I probably ruined it. Mayday. Mayday. I have to pull it out and tighten them down a little bit. Let's give her another go. Ah, yes! We're booting! It wasn't tight enough. It drives me nuts. It's so terrifying. Let's see if all the RAM's working in both processors. 16 gigs of RAM, that's not right. But both processors are showing up, that's a big plus. But memory, who's not sure? Oof. We gotta tighten this down even more. Isn't that amazing? One RAM slot shows up, how the balance of the heatsink matters to how much RAM is showing up. We're not out of the woods yet. So we're going to go another half turn or quarter turn. Uh, all right. Just going to go a quarter turn because I just don't want to overdo it. It's tight already. Quarter turn. <laughs> that was absolute torture. That second CPU, man. Somehow, little bits of something kept falling in between the chip and the motherboard, at least the first time. And then the second time, I also found something, but maybe that's just when I took it off, the heat sink. But what happened is, there were, there were times when I got it to work, but like three chips of RAM weren't working, only one. So I tightened it some more, and then it stopped working, and I got CPU light on the motherboard. And then, so I, I cleaned it, I remounted it, again, it didn't work. So as they say, third time's a charm. I really thought I killed my computer because it just wasn't booting at all, but then I pulled the second CPU out and booted off the first one, and it booted. So I was like, oh, thank God, and all the RAM was showing up, so that one was always good. It was the second one was just more futzy, and... Um, keeping my fingers crossed that it's all working tomorrow but as you can see I mean I started doing this at something like seven o'clock not even how has it taken me this long because I refused to give up and I kept tweaking it but the, I think what happened was is I kept I was over tightening it and actually there's two lights on the motherboard and this is good for everybody who's doing this who has the issue um, if the red light is on behind CPU B when you look inside you have the door off you will see a red light on meaning that that there is a CPU issue but that light was always on when the computer would not boot then when I did get it to boot with both CPUs in there and the RAM wasn't working, like one RAM chip was showing up on CPU B, the light um, between the two, sort of near the memory, was there was a light coming on there. And it was showing you that the CPU was okay, CPU light wasn't on, but the freaking memory light was on. So there was, and it was, there was two chips or three chips or one chip missing. So on the, the final one that worked, I put it back in. I didn't tighten it too much. I went very light. I booted it. It did not boot. 
I tightened, this is just CPU B we're talking about. So CPU B, I tightened it just a little more and it booted. But then one chip was still not showing up. So I did another tightening all the way around, one more quarter screw, and bingo. Oh, I really did not want to spend all night. You know, some people do this and it's like, ah, go slap on the stop, put it in, boom, you're done. Well, <laughs> that hasn't happened for me. But the good news is I didn't kill my logic board because I thought for a while there that I had really just, I'm in the middle of so many projects, I'm out of my mind to be doing this right now, so. My Mac Pro is more powerful than it's ever been. Why did it?